Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Bills and today we're dealing with the 1990 Subaru Legacy RS. Now this has 957 horsepower, 628 pounds feet of torque from a 4 litre twin turbocharged flat 6 engine. It now weighs 2,800 pounds, still has its all-wheel drive system but it now has off-road tyres and off-road suspension to go along with it. And it can now do not 60 in 3.078 seconds, not to 106.068 seconds and go to a top speed of 229 miles an hour. So the fastest uh, Subaru we've had on this series so far has been the WRX STI ARX Supercar, which got into the top 10 with a time of 3 minutes 17.439. Now I think this has around the same kind of power as that, but could easily be lighter though as well. So uh, yeah, but we've also had the likes of the STI S209, which was right down the bottom of the leaderboard. Now granted that was one of the first cars that we took on this series, so was a little bit unfamiliar with the uh, course that we were uh, driving on but still uh, in terms of stats this is fairly in the middle in terms of good stats obviously the speed acceleration and launch are all really rather good braking is decent for a car of this weight and uh, size but yeah the handling isn't particularly great so uh, yeah hopefully that won't hinder it too much but let's see what can be done I hope this is more along the lines of the uh, the ARX supercar and not in line with the STI S209, so uh, yeah, I'd much prefer it to be near the top 10 than uh, way down the bottom, but yeah, the handling isn't giving me the biggest of confidence. But it is plenty quick enough in a straight line at least, but at least it is a very large car. See, it had an all-wheel drive standard, so I'll have to go around a bit as well. Well, that is the case with which every Super Bowl we've ever had on one of these games, to be honest. Yeah, been doing well so far. Obviously, this was a rally car back in its day, which is why I've given it the livery it has and the extra lights. Not that it would uh, benefit in terms of handling or anything, but it does look cool. Age hasn't really been a f you know, influencing factor in this series because obviously we have a couple of classic muscle cars in the top 10. So, yeah, I'm not expecting this because you know, it's 30 years old and have any impact on this at all. The opposite, in fact, it might have a beneficial uh, and uh, beneficially and uh, impact considering it doesn't weigh very much and it's quite small. So, especially compared to Supers nowadays. Yeah, a bit of an overstay moment there though, unfortunately. Issues with the extra power by the feels of things. Well, the drive system is keeping it in check really rather well nicely. Got the fastest down this bit. Compared to the likes of the Hennessy Venom F5, for instance, in the previous episode, which was ludicrously quick in straight line speed, but really rather quite slow in other areas due to its rock hard suspension bouncing all over the place whereas this has a much softer su suspension which is a lot more compliant and therefore able to deal with the bumps and the jumps fine. It's not being thrown around or losing control for starters. Which means it's not going to be as quick but be a lot more consistent. Yeah, 
121 across the finish line there, and a time of 3 minutes 26.665. So not quite as quick as the ARX supercar, but it's yeah far from the bottom like the STI S209, which only managed a time of 3 minutes 33.314. So yeah, that was nearly, what, 8 seconds behind us. So uh, yeah, that is pretty good from this car, especially given its age. So uh, yeah. 26.665 puts us just behind the Bentley Turbo R by the slimmest of margins. Uh, but we are ahead of the McLaren GT, Audi TT RS, Oldsmobile Tornado, Volkswagen Golf R, Ford F-150 SVT Lightning and some serious off-road competition like the Porsche 911 Desert Flyer, Land Rover Defender 110X, Ford Bronco, Toyota Land Cruiser, the Sierra Cars RX3 and the Toyota Tundra. Uh, but not only slightly behind the Turbo R, but also the Aston Martin Valhalla, that's going way back to the start of this series, as well as the Mini John Cooper Works GP and the Dodge Magnum SRT8. So, uh, yeah, just at the end of the day, I don't think it had that much grunt, really, to make the most of its lack of power and rather agile handling, but, yeah, really rather consistent, had no issues really at all, uh, so, yeah, just the lack of grunt is really what let it down a little bit, because as you saw in some sections we were struggling to get more than 130, so uh, yeah, that's the only really let down with this, but still, might not be as insanely quick as the likes of the Hennessy, or as mightily impressive in terms of the speed as it can get up to, but as far as consistent, you know, off-road rally cars go, this is a pretty fun one to drive, so uh, yeah, highly recommend trying this car out if you haven't already, but nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, bye!